Chronic Exertional Compartment Syndrome Chronic Exertional Compartment Syndrome is an exercise-induced neuromuscular condition that occurs when a compartment cannot accommodate for the increase in pressure during exercises. The information included in this video is published data. It occurs bilaterally in about 80 to 90 percent of patients in the lower leg. Published data show that the distribution by the compartment includes the anterior 40 to 60 percent, lateral 12 to 35 percent, the deep posterior 32 to 60 percent, and the superficial posterior from 2 to 20 percent. In rare occasions, the cases of chronic exertional compartment syndrome can occur in the thigh, in the foot, in the forearm, in the hand. The increased blood flow during exercise can cause up to 20% increase in muscle volume. In chronic exertional compartment syndrome, the thick facial compartment cannot accommodate the expanding tissue volume, which raises the intracompartmental pressure. While the elevated pressure may lead to ischemia and pain, it's not enough to cause irreversible muscle damage to the tissue as seen in acute compartment syndrome. The high pressure does cause pain, tenderness, swelling, parathesia, and weakness that usually affect the activity. Symptoms may be due to relative ischemia, stimulation of the fascia, or periosteal sensory nerves by increased compartment pressure in response to reduced blood flow. Differential diagnosis, medial tibial stress syndrome, we call it chin splints, often develops in distance runners. Pain is diffuse in the distal third of the anterior leg, usually over the medial border of the tibia. A stress fracture usually develop in those who sharply increase their training to perform high impact sports. Most stress fractures are located at the distal third of the tibia, but it may occur anywhere on the tibia or the fibula. A runner with pain in the tibia or in the leg may have a stress fracture. The x-ray may be negative and an MRI or a bone scan may be necessary for the diagnosis of a stress fracture. Deep vein thrombosis, usually caused by a blood clot from a trauma or from surgery or prolonged immobilization. Diagnosis will include diffuse pain, tenderness, and the swelling throughout the leg. Doppler may be necessary for the diagnosis. Nerve entrapment often involves superficial perineal nerve, but it can involve the deep perineal nerve or the shorter nerve. Pain and parathesia begin with exertion in the distribution of the involved nerve. The nail sign is usually positive. Vascular disorders. Popliteal artery entrapment syndrome is the most common claudication from atherosclerotic disease or venous insufficiency are possible. Radiculopathy. Radiating pain from the lumbosacral spine to the lower leg even when at rest. Pain sometimes accompanied with weakness and parathesia. Facial defects. Pain may occur over the distal and trilateral leg, where the superficial perineal nerve exits the lateral compartment. The herniated muscle may be visible and tender to palpation. Clinical presentation. Usually the pressure is measured in chronic exertional compartment syndrome. The resting intracompartmental pressure is usually greater than 15 mm mercury. The pain begins within 20 minutes of exercise. Pain, swelling, claudication, and parathesia after exercise. The pressure remains over 30 mm mercury one minute after the exercise. The pressure remains over 20 mm mercury for longer than 5 minutes after the end of exercise. The chronic exertional compartment syndrome is bilaterally in about 80 to 95 percent of patients. The anterior compartment of the leg is the most commonly affected. The incidence is equal among males and females. Physical examination is often normal before exercise. 
The onset of pain is usually predictable and reproducible at a specific distance and or intensity. If left untreated, symptoms will worsen and it will become constant. The diagnosis is usually made by measuring the pressure. The patient should be placed in a supine position with the knee in about 10 to 30 degree of flexion and the foot in about 20 degree plantar flexion. These are the facts. There are one or more of the following generally accepted as diagnostic for that syndrome. A pre-exercise pressure more than 15 mm mercury, post-exercise pressure at one minute after the exercise is about 30 mm mercury or more, post-exercise pressure at five minutes more than 20 mm mercury. Treatment. Usually conservative treatment that includes cessation of activity that causes the problem, rest, ice, physiotherapy, and deep massage. These treatments, however, are generally unsuccessful. Fasciotomy is the only proven successful treatment of chronic exertional compartment syndrome if symptoms worsen or continue for more than three months. Following physiotherapy, complete recovery, and for return to activity are typical within 8 to 12 weeks. This is how the fasciotomy is done for the anterior compartment of the leg. All my videos and this video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.